Hey everyone, welcome to part two of motor rotation versus input power. This video is going to be an addendum or a part two, if you will, to a previous video that I published a few weeks ago concerning motor rotation. And in that video, I made a quick program in Robot C and tested the rotation speed at different input power on an unloaded motor, and I tested three different motors the two EV3 motors and the NXT motor. Some of my viewers then asked to see how a motor would work under different conditions, like let's say if we used an unregulated motor block or if we added a load to the motor. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be using the same program I used last time, just subjecting it to different conditions and seeing what the resulting power curve looks like. I followed a procedure similar to the one I used in the last video. So if you're not familiar with what I did there, check out that video before you proceed. This time I omitted the NXT motor and just tested the EV3 large and EV3 medium motors since the NXT motor is identical to the EV3 large motor anyway. For the loaded test I made a simple mechanism that fit in line with the drive shaft coming out of the motor so it would go in between the motor and the rotation sensor. And basically all it was was a 1 to 3 gear ratio so gearing the RPM up 3 times to decrease its torque and the small pinion gear had one of those blue friction pegs on it, so this friction was what introduced a constant load on the motor. I tested both the EV3 large and EV3 medium motors, again omitting the NXT motor because it's essentially identical to the EV3 large motor. My second test evaluated the rotation speed with an unregulated motor block, and this got kind of tricky because the problem was I needed Robot C to measure the RPM because it had the debug stream but it didn't include the unregulated motor block, so I also needed to use EV3G. What I ended up doing was splitting the programming between two different EV3 bricks, where the power side, the part that powered the motor, ran an EV3G program, and the side that had the rotation sensor ran the Robot C program and did the measurements and printed them to the debug stream. Just like last time, I put all of my data into an Excel sheet so I could graph the results. My first graph here is rotation speed versus power for the large motor. As we see the normal motor, which I tested in the last video is in blue for a comparison, alongside of the red bar, which is the motor with a load on it, and the orange, which is the motor with the unregulated block. And you'll see, first if we compare the red and the blue, that the motor with the load on it was pretty much the same all the way up until about 80% power is where the loaded motor reached its maximum speed and it couldn't increase anymore. And the EV3 large motor generally has a lot of torque, so for the most part it wasn't really affected by that extra load. It didn't introduce enough resistance to make much of a difference until it started to get to a higher RPM when the, the friction was greatest because the rotation speed was higher. On the other hand we have the unregulated motor which is the orange bar and what's interesting here is it looks like the unregulated motor reaches a higher power faster. You see it has a steeper slope and reaches its maximum speed sooner. However, I would be wary of this and I really don't think there's any difference here. The reason being is because as you recall, I had to write the unregulated program in EV3G, which has power that goes from 0 to 100. And as I explained in the last video, the power in Robot C goes from 0 to 127. So I think this explains this difference that we're seeing. So if you're able to graph them both on the same scale, which is uh, very difficult, and I wouldn't have been able to do this, but I think you would see that they line up almost exactly the same. So I wouldn't conclude any difference between the unregulated and the normal motor without any load from this graph. In my second graph, I show the same exact tests performed on the medium motor. And again, we have the normal unloaded motor in blue, the loaded motor in red, and the unregulated motor in orange. And comparing the blue and the red, we see a similar story as before, where the red loaded motor seems to be the same up until about a certain power level. It looks like they diverge at a lower power with the medium motor. In this case, it looks to be about 55% as opposed to 80% on the large motor. And I think this has to do with the medium motor having a lower amount of torque than the large motor because both motors have a decent amount of torque, the medium motor of course a little less being a smaller motor. And when it gets to that certain point, uh, the friction becomes too great and the loaded motor doesn't start increasing speed 
as quickly as the unloaded motor. What's interesting is the loaded motor here, it doesn't quite reach its maximum speed. It kind of wavers a little bit as you see it's unstable and it reaches its maximum speed of about 75% and kind of wavers uh, from there. It's not doesn't necessarily reach a steady speed. Now if we move on to the orange, that's the unregulated motor, we see something similar as we did last time uh, where it looks like um, the unregulated motor is a little bit ahead of the normal motor. However, you'll see at the beginning in like the first five or ten percent of the power, the unregulated motor's power actually jumps up sooner but then the slope stays the same the rest of the way, which is kind of interesting. It's a little different than what we saw before. The unregulated motor reaches its maximum speed more quickly. However, the maximum speed it reaches is actually higher than the maximum speed of the normal motor, which is interesting because in the last test with the large motor, we saw that the unregulated and normal motors had the same maximum speed. But here with the medium motor, the unregulated motor is actually faster. Please remember to take my results with a grain of salt because unfortunately due to the different scaling between the two programs that I had to use in the unregulated motor test, my results aren't the most scientific. One last thing I want to go over before I conclude the video for this week is going back to the previous video as I had discussed motor affinity laws and I kind of misattributed them to what we were testing. One of my viewers pointed out after I published that video that motor affinity laws only apply to a loaded motor, more specifically a fan or a pump that's moving some kind of fluid that has an increasing resistance as the speed increases. So that's why we didn't really see the kind of affinity law that I was describing in the previous video because affinity laws aren't applicable to what I was testing then. So that's just something I wanted to point out. And yes, now you know that Builder Dude does indeed make mistakes, and that is one of them. Thanks for checking out my video this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.